G'day, Dylan from the Byron Bay Observatory here. Let's say that you want to go portable with your astronomy. Uh, you want to be able to pick this up and go somewhere. That's all good. It's a portable mount. It's a little telescope, little guide scope, but I want to be portable. I don't want to take this thing. I don't want to take the laptop. I don't want this sitting out in the cold. What if I could control all of that with a little box instead? That's where ZWO's ASI Air is a genius product. And there are a few competitors which I talked about in the last video. But what happens if I want to use my QHY camera and my ZWO camera and a Skywatcher mount? What happens if I really want to mix things up? That's something that ZWO ASI Air can't do or won't do. That's something I discussed in the last video and I did mention this new project Quarks. This is a open source project from QHY to essentially replace the ZWO ASI Air with a more hardware neutral solution. There are a lot of automatic telescopes out there at the moment. Automatic telescopes coming out the wazoo. Now the ASI Air isn't really an automatic telescope solution. ZWO has the C star for that and there's a new C star coming out soon apparently. But something inside me really says that maybe one of these boxes can in the end just turn any telescope into an automatic telescope. Polar alignment is still a bugbear, but there are so many good polar aligned software routines right now. I'm sure this can be sold somehow or made really simple for the user. But today we're gonna to go through the Quarks preview because really it's just a preview. It's not even beta software right now, but the image just dropped this week. Anyone can download it, install it onto a Raspberry Pi 4. So I'm gonna show you how to do that and what the preview looks like. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. This is a Raspberry Pi 4, super cheap. This is a little case you can buy for it, also super cheap, and no screws, you just click it in. And this is a little micro SD card which has the image of Quarks which you can download. And if you have USB power, USB-C, we're ready to go. So installing this image in Raspberry Pi is actually pretty easy. I've never used Raspberry Pi before, but you just stick that little micro SD into a computer and use the Raspberry Pi images software to get this dialog where you can select the device, the Raspberry Pi 4, the operating system, which is the image file that we downloaded from the Discord or the Google Drive link, uh, should be in the description, and the storage medium, which is the micro SD card itself. And then you click next and you get this little prompt here and you can edit settings at this point. So if you want to, you can change the host name, you can put in a uh, Wi-Fi username and password, whatever you like here. There are some more options you can go through. Then you get a prompt to say, you sure you want to raise this device? It'll start writing and it'll start verifying and then it will say finished. So pretty easy. And then you just turn it on and connect to that Wi-Fi network that you specified before. Now, in theory, you should be able to connect to Quarks colon 8080 and that should take you via a web browser to the app. Uh, or you might have the app itself on your phone. I've got the iOS app running. This is a beta version. Uh, they sent me the test flight from the QHY development team, which is cool. Uh, and I can confirm that it works just really the same as the browser. I did notice that the time is different between when I open up in the app and the app does a really good job of reconnecting to it. So even if you close the app or come back, it will just auto reconnect to the session, which is good. Uh, but the times were out between the app and the desktop. So that's a bug, but this is preview software, right? Not all of this works. In fact, a lot of it doesn't work right now, but the UE is really set up nicely. I'll show you what I mean. So if I go here to near Sydney, which is my um, approximate location, it's getting that data from the time zone that we put in before, but I can actually search for Byron Bay and it does that search locally and comes up pretty fast. Like, <clears throat> Remember, this device doesn't have internet access. It's designed to be used out in the field. None of this is coming from the internet, which means all of this data is preloaded. There might be GPS features for later, but for now, the auto location works great. You can just put your suburb in, and that should be um, close enough. We have Stellarium Web running the actual uh, planetarium itself. The search is pretty cool. You can just search for um, anything really. Let's go Helix Nebula. We can do a go-to, we can zoom in, we can zoom out. 
We have some status indicators up here. These icons in the top appear to show what is active and what isn't active. It's showing as guiding active here. I've got nothing connected right now and nothing is showing up for my device drivers or anything like that. But let's go through the views. I assume this is the imaging view here. Um, it, what I thought was a joystick appears to change the length of the exposure and there is this graph here which appears to be a HFR graph or a full width half maximum which means this is probably going to be running the focuser. I can see the focus in, focus out, I can see the move to a position, speed and steps and histogram. So I believe this will be a live view that we'll be running. Uh, there is also the guide view here as well so we can see the RA deck for the guide graph and this little toggle here just switches back between that live image view and the view of the planetarium itself. Uh, then we have another view up here in the corner where it appears to show processes. So this is where you would set up your sequence uh, for the length of the exposures, the filter that you're using, uh, type of frames, light frames, dark frames or whatever, and have the progress of those processes in here. None of this seems to be live yet, but, uh, but the user interface looks quite usable. And in the columns here, we have some connection icons for connecting devices. We have a fits viewer. So once you have images, you can look through the fits. We have connecting the guider, connecting the main camera, connecting the mount, the telescope section, which um, just has focal length that you can put in, for example. None of this is persistent. So when I turn off the device, um, the settings sort of disappear. So I assume that'll be fixed in time. We have the focuser connection and a pole camera and a filter wheel. That's just the re refresh page icon and we have some data credits in here for Stellarium by the looks of it. And I'm sure that will fill out as the project goes on. Of course, Stellarium you're probably familiar with. You can turn the constellations on and off, change the atmosphere levels, the look and feel of it. It's all very pretty, it's all very quick. Uh, I must say it runs even quicker in the native app. But the app itself is super responsive and really usable, at least on my iPhone. As I showed you before, you can search for targets and you have a planet to night view here, which shows a graph of the planet visibility. I would like those to be clickable so you can go to the planets, but of course you can just search for the planets as well in here and go that way. Now, this is just a preview version. It's not even beta. Uh, we're told by QHY that there could be three months until they have a beta version ready to roll. Um, they will need people to test different drivers and test different bits of equipment. So if you think this project is for you, um, I would definitely recommend grabbing a Raspberry Pi 4 or 5. Maybe the image will come out for 5 eventually. Very cheap and portable little solution if this works. A few of you have left me comments saying that um, this was a project that QHY had in the past and it seems to have been resurrected now. Certainly all the work that they put into the user interface, it looks pretty polished, it looks pretty finished. Uh, so all they have to do now is connect this to all the functionality to make everything work and load in a bunch of drivers and you can download this yourself and run one up or you can wait for them to release the official Star Master version. But honestly, for someone who hasn't used Raspberry Pi before, this was super easy, very, very, very easy to get up and running. So if you want to get a Raspberry Pi and run it up, I'll put the links in the description if you need to. That's it. Very quick video. Just wanted to show you the preview. Fingers crossed. This project bears fruit. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you've been watching Star Stuff and remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die. This is a little micro SD card. Oh, shit.